Hey fuckers, this is Carrie King, and before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to this channel, Border City Rock Talk. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, button and comment below. As well, check out this interview. It's going to be, uh, be a bit of a transcription, but the link is going to be there at my uh, buddy's Montreal Rocks site. Got Kerry King with me. How are you doing, Kerry? I'm not bad, actually. Um, we're having some technical difficulties with video. We're trying to fix it, so everybody just stick around. But we're here to talk about uh, Carrie's new venture, his solo album, From Hell I Rise. Now, how long have you been um, in the process of writing that? You started during the pandemic, I guess? Yeah, and some, some are songs that never got finished for Repentless. Um, so there's there's stuff from... 20 years ago there's stuff from two years ago um and that's that's generally how i've worked over the years you know there's always something in my back pocket that never got finished that i liked and just mm -hmm. never got around to finishing so um here here we go again part of residue i remember playing residue with paul the last time paul was in the band <laughs> is that right and yeah. um, some of them just get old and not finished you know <laughs> <laughs> and residue and toxic are the singles out on youtube so i'm gonna put the links below check them out um those are good songs but i have to tell you i listened to the album and i gotta tell you my favorite song is um trophies of the tyrant i just like the riff in there and the melodic riff and speaking of which there's a couple of other songs that stand out crucifixion or crucif crucifixion and tension stand out but i wanted to ask you would you think this is a um good way of summing up the sound I, I i in my head i had it said it's kind of a blistering chainsaw dark metal how does that sound you know there's so many words for so many things that i've done <laughs> historically um yeah. you know the word jumble that that you throw them together at any given time it all works right and and you know what i'm pretty sure you're familiar with uh fellow canuck uh jeff waters of annihilator mm-hmm and it kind of um, listening to the album, obviously, it's got a Slayer feel into it. It uh, it kind of hinted to me at um, just um, just the way he brings it. It's actually the tone in his guitar and your guitar. Um, now, regarding the tour, you guys are going on tour soon. You're going to be uh, supporting, which is kind of a funny word. Why you, you you wouldn't be supporting anybody, in my opinion? But you're going out with Lamb of God and Mastodon. Now, a question a lot of fans are going to be asking. Are you going to be doing in the set list um, other than um, the new album material? Are you going to be throwing in a few Slayer songs, uh, Kerry? Yeah, very few for this run because we're only scheduled to be playing 40 minutes. So when we did an hour and a half show in Europe mm -hmm. for a couple of headlines, we were doing, I think, I think we maxed out at seven Slayer songs. But on this run, I think it's going to be two. Okay, perfect. And then uh, after that, uh, you guys are going to, you, you're touring till August. And then after that, you have some three shows set up with Slayer. Is there anything um, else being scheduled uh, in the meantime, or are those just not, the not that anybody in North America would care about? We have in November, we have two shows in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Then in December, we have like a week's worth of shows in Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, just, to, just to, uh, like I said, we're going to keep this on the, uh, the carry king um solo album but is there any material being written for any future slayer music uh any gossip on that or no <laughs> i i never plan on doing a slayer record again all right perfect so um i wanted to ask you the band members that you assembled for this describe uh each of the guys that you um you you handpicked and uh why uh you thought that they were um the best bets for you for this album which is dynamite by the way well first and foremost um of course they're all top notch at what they do that that's not really an issue i could have went a million different directions and got you know top notch players but at this point in my career this point in my life it was important to me to get guys i know are friends i know aren't drama you know there's not going to be any divas backstage we're just going to yeah. be there 
warm yeah. up play shows and and yeah. have a killer time for yeah. what's probably going to be the last band any of us are ever in right so for the viewers that aren't aware they haven't got the album yet and i'm going to put the link below as well so everybody can go and get it and get merch and everything from it just describe just uh, really quickly who you got on base and um you know their pedigree and uh just go through the band if you don't mind well, bass, my friend Kyle Sanders, who most recently was in Hell Yeah with Vinnie Paul. Right. Um, I met him, and he's the one I've known the least. I met him in 2015 on the Mayhem Tour, and we hit it off. And, you know, I got his contact, not ever expecting to need it, but, you know, just as friends do. Um, and he was one of the one of the first guys I texted when I heard Hell Yeah was doing their last tour. I said, hey, man, I'm not trying to be insensitive to what's happening, but – if you have any intention of continuing, you know, I got something for you. Right. So that was Kyle, Phil, Phil, a lot of people in the U S may not know. He did four Slayer shows in Europe in the end of 2018 when Gary had, I think his dad was sick or something. He had to go home. So Phil mm -hmm. came out and he, he basically told me that he wanted to be a part of my feature. And I think that's just where it sat since then. I don't think we ever had another conversation about it. I think, I think it was one of those, so let it be written. So it is done kind of things. Yeah. Um, mark i've known mark off and on for decades um and we hit it off uh like probably in the mid 20 teens when they opened for one of the slayer runs and early yeah. on he threw his name in and said hey man i want to throw my name in the hat and honestly he's the only dude that ever did demos with me and paul you know oh. we worked with him probably for like 10 months before I even told him he had the gig, he would just come down and try to better what we had. And if there was new material, um, sing that, um, and drums, Paul, I've, I've been working with Paul since the early nineties. So no explanation needed for him. Perfect. Um, now that this album's out and it's been out since May and the sales are good. Um, are, are you writing for uh, more solo stuff or are you just waiting to hit it? get this run out and a couple of Slayer shows and just taking some time to breathe? Or are you one of those people, Carrie, that's always writing? Dude, pedal to the metal, man. Um, I've got, I've still got stuff left over from Repentless. I've got stuff left over from, from Hell I Rise. I've got right. stuff that I've written since from Hell I Rise and we've demoed 10 or 12 of them already. So okay. what I'm planning on doing is letting record one cycle run its course, yeah. which I see going at least till, the end of summer next year um and paul and i have already discussed going into the studio immediately whenever the touring's done and, and using your your sharp tour chops so to speak and bust the second one out get it done and whenever the record company wants to put it out we start cycle two there we go right right so here's a couple of my usually i have a couple of funny questions i don't i don't really have one today <laughs> why but I, I find it funny that um a lot of people are not aware of um, your relationship to the Beastie Boys in that solo. Um, just explain really quickly how that came about. You know, the simplicity of it is what's funny about it. Um, we were doing um, what became the Raining Blood album, and the yeah. Beasties were doing License to Ill in the same studio, like down the hall from each other. And Rick oh. Rubin was doing both projects, so they needed a lead on that particular song, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. So yeah, I thought yeah. about it and I went, yeah, why not? I can use a couple hundred bucks. You know, I certainly <laughs> wasn't, you know, well to do back then. So um, yeah. that's, that's what I did. You know, I went in there and I did it. And in hindsight, I wish I didn't get paid. I wish I took a quarter point or something. I was just going to say that. Now yeah. I would be a rich man. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you're not uh, slumming it, but I mean, yeah, for the royalties be kicking in on that song for sure. Like, I mean, just interviewed Steve Lynch of autograph and, turn up the radio. I mean, I, he's still collecting huge checks. Now, another thing I wanted to ask you is, well, I'm the same way as you. I grew up, you know, Aussie, Dawkins, Iron Maiden, but I was a fan of Venom back in the day with, you know, black metal. So you, you obviously were influenced by Venom. Oh, of course. One of the, one of the greatest moments of my life was, you know, when I'm on tour and if there's a day off, I'm always on YouTube watching music, catching up on things I might've missed. And I turned on a Venom show from uh, Hellfest of that year, and he was yeah. wearing a Slayer shirt. And that to me was just, I'm, uh, that's cool. <laughs> Kronos is wearing a fucking Slayer shirt. That yeah, just got, idol me, looking that at got idol, me excited, right? and I'm like, hell yes. That's awesome. 
Okay, as I promised earlier, because I know that uh, you're short on time, I won't keep you much longer. I just want to ask you three quick things. Some 41 is a Canadian band, a bunch of young kids. Um, how did you um, get involved with um, those boys from Ajax, Ontario? You know, it's funny. I just ran into them in Europe a couple of times. They were on the same festivals as us. And I hadn't seen them in a long, long time. So they made a way to come out and say, hey, which I was happy about because I haven't seen them forever. And how that one happened, I remember... I turned it down for months and months and months. I'm like, my fans won't get it. <laughs> my fans won't get it. My fans won't get it. Then the guy from the record label, here's an, here's another funny story, kind of a full circle of what we were talking about. He comes up to me and he says, well, you did the Beastie Boys. And I went, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you're right. So I did it. There you go. And so back then they probably had acne. So when you most recently seen them, I, I guess they were a grown man. <laughs> yeah. And I think they're, I think, I think something on their tour said something about final tour. I don't know. I think, I guess it was going to be the last run. Not sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Everybody, everybody, every band says that. <laughs> so uh, a couple of cliche questions and I'll let you go, my friend. I appreciate your time. I appreciate uh, um, Mary and uh, Selena and Heidi for setting this up. This was great. F uh, favorite Canadian band uh, artist, past, present, or future? Well, it can't be future. Past or present, uh, Kerry? Give me five to pick from. Oh, okay. Well, every, don't say Rush. Everybody says Rush, but I mean Annihilator, Triumph, um, you know, Killer Dwarfs, uh, Lover Boy, um, Anvil, um, Pat Travers. I would probably have to go out of that out of that list. I'd probably have to go Anvil. Yeah, Anvil. Because in the actually, early days, in the early days, I was into it, um, and then you know they kind of went away for for. A, at least I think they went away for a long time. And then I heard they came back, but I haven't seen them since they've been back. Yeah, they're actually uh, getting out for a tour. And the documentary they did, you should check it out. It's a, it's a crazy story how, as Canadians, it's hard to um, make money in music uh, because we don't market as responsibly and smart as Americans. And um, Lips had to work a day job. I think it was at a food processing plant, even after... You know, people knew that Metallica were influenced by Anvil. So last question, and I'll let you go. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe, Kerry? Subscribe. All right. See how Everybody, quick I am? <laughs> you are quick. I, I, I stump guys with that. They start thinking about not do that. Like, I'm like, man, it's a simple question. So everybody do a Slayer legend, Kerry King says, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, once again, my friend, thanks for your time. Cheers, man. We'll see you out there.